want to examine the way that people like to think about things. Because unfortunately, a lot of the time we'll look out at the universe, at the world, and we'll think that what we see is essentially unbiased. We've got our subjective view of the world, and we've got our objective view of the world. And I'm going to put these into two categories, because people like to put things into categories so that they can place them, sort them around, and then take a look at them from a distance. And it often does help to be able to do that. And the difference between the subjective view of the universe, your subjective view of the universe, is essentially your emotional brain. Your objective view of the universe is your logical brain, essentially. Now, the trouble is, we're just starting to develop our logical brain. It's quite recent that we've started to be able to look at things relatively objectively. Animals can't really do that. Our, our subjective, our emotional brain, that's our primitive brain. Animals have that. Most animals have that. That's our instinct. That's our intuition. Those are, those are hardwired programs uh, into our genetic make sometimes into our genetic makeup, sometimes into our character, sometimes just into our emotions. You know, some people react differently to different things, and sometimes that can be a learned response, and sometimes they might have a, a, an oversensitivity to something or an underdeveloped sensitivity to something. We started to really be able to develop our, our objective brains, our logical brains, when we started to be tool makers. You know, in the in the um, Stone Age, and that's when we started to look at the world as potentially being extensions of our own body, as lo looking at the world as, okay, what can we what can we make out of this? How can we utilize this? And before we can even start to utilize it to under to to make it work for us, we have to figure out what its very nature is, in a sense. Is it, is it hard? Is it going to break easily? Um, if you throw it, does it come down in a certain way? Uh, is it symmetrical? Is it sharp? Is it light? Is it heavy? You know, those are the very basic essentials that we started with. Because before we could make a tool out of it, we had to figure out what it was. And it was our, a great advantage to us to become tool makers because we, we don't have to just stick with the cards we're dealt, in a sense. Our, our, our logical brains, this is a very new development, and most people are not very good at using their logical brains. And you know, you can't really blame them on some levels because evolutionarily speaking, it's quite a recent development. There are a few animals that, that are just starting to be tool makers, just starting. Uh, there are some chimps that know how to use basic tools. Um, and birds use twigs and feathers. There's lots of animals that know how to use bits and pieces of the world to suit themselves. But when we became tool makers in a broad sense, the whole world became more applicable to us than it, than it had ever been before. And we wanted to know, we wanted to know how it worked. We wanted to, to, to find out everything about it because the potential in being able to do that, the potential benefit to knowing how the world works is huge. I mean, we, we're starting to be able to cure cancer, cure, possibly cure death. I mean, we might not die. We might be able to essentially live beyond the, the, the normal bounds of what we would consider life. And I find it all very exciting rather than, that, rather than scary. Some people do find it scary. I'm, I don't think you have cause to find it scary. I think people who are scared of the future are people who don't know how to make it work for them. And it is difficult because our, our our understanding of how to use our brains, how to, how to make situations, how to make 
our circumstances, how to make our own brains work for us. There are no standards. There are no classes you can take. There are no legitimate classes you can take that's, that's going to really help you do that. Because you see, what happens is it's, it's practically impossible to make an objective decision on your own. Because it all gets processed through the emotional brain before it can go into the logical brain. Our emotional brain is our more primitive. We're only just starting to develop our logical brain. It all gets pushed through the, the, the primitive brain first, and then we start thinking about it on a logical level afterwards. And that's why sometimes people tend to simply react to something without thinking about it properly, because we're not very good at thinking in a logical way. We're not very good at it. And we need to get good at it. If we can get good at it, we can make the situation work for us. We can make the world work for us. You see, getting mad doesn't really help just on its own. You know, if there's, if there's a problem, yeah, of course, of course you might get pissed off sometimes, right. But just getting pissed off just on its own doesn't solve the problem. You've got to figure out how to make it work. For a lot of people, their emotional brain, their logical brain, are, are very incompatible. If you can learn to make your emotional brain and your logical brain compatible, you've really got an advantage. You've got a huge advantage. And some people say things like, oh, I've got good instincts. You know, follow your instincts. If you've got good instincts. And that's a big mistake, really, because it's not a question of simply following your instincts. That's not a good idea. That's, a, that's too much of a black and white solution. It's not a good idea to just follow your instincts. It's a good idea to know when to follow your instincts and when not to. Because you need to learn. You need to learn what your potential biases might be. You don't necessarily have to fix your bias. You just have to be aware of them. Because then you can know, hang on, is this the best thing I could do, given what I know? For instance, if somebody is bipolar and they're feeling terribly depressed and, and upset, you know, it's a benefit to them to know, hang on, maybe this is just how I feel at the moment. This might not be a very accurate determination of what's going on right now. I mean, yeah, you feel shitty, and that's real. The feeling of feeling shitty is real. But it's not a good idea to act on that because it's not giving you good information. And you see, your logical brain has to work for your emotional brain too. Because let's say you do something and essentially it all works logically. You know, you should come to good results. But you end up going through the, 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 the process. And you find at the end, you know what, I'm not very happy with this. And your, your logical brain goes, well, what do you want? I did everything, you know, essentially right. And you, your emotional brain just goes, you know what? I'm not happy with this situation. I don't like it. So your logical brain has to go back and try and find a way to make your emotional brain happy. And I, I know it sounds a bit ridiculous, me putting these two things into these groups, but this is actually a very good way of looking at the brain to know how it works.